You know, I think all Blender artists at some point have looked at Ian Hubert's work or William Langren's or Max Hayes and gone, how do they get so much detail? Like every picture, every frame, every animation just feels like there's a whole world there. And I think I've discovered some of the tips, some of the tricks they use in Blender to get that look. Let's find out how in this video. So let me show you tip number one in action. Have a couple of assets, chuck them in your asset library, and then you can just spam it around to create so much detail. So let me show you how it was used in this scene here. So I've got my pipe assets here. They're actually free. I downloaded them from Max Hay. I'll leave the link to that in the description. Anyway, if you wanna make this part of your asset library, what you wanna do is you wanna make a separate Blender file. For example, this one right here that has all the pipe assets in it. Then you go right click, mark as asset, and you do that on all of them. Then in your environment, you go to edit preferences, you go to file paths, you go plus, and then you direct Blender to the file path where you just saved that Blender file full of your pipes. And then once you've done that, it'll just come up here in Blender. So what you can do is you can just drag and drop each asset individually in. And now you can see in this scene here, there's just a bunch of pipes intersecting, interlocking, and it doesn't even matter if they intersect. Like, unless you look really closely, you, you cannot tell at all that these are intersecting. It's just creating this little world. Bam this around a bunch, and you just create this, this detail, when in reality, it's just a couple of assets scaled and duplicated around everywhere. So over time, you'll build up your asset library, you'll make things for projects, you'll put it in your asset library, so that whenever you need something detailed, you can just go drag and drop, duplicate it and spam it around make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment down below suggesting what i should do for my next video anyway back to the video tip number two what it is is you model some basic shapes and then you duplicate some of them inset some of them delete some parts and keep others and then you get this complicated looking mesh and then once you have that you can just duplicate it around a bunch and no one will be able to tell you've got this thing right right here which is just the same thing duplicated, right? And then the same thing duplicated over here, rotated. And then the same thing duplicated behind it. And then you've just got a wall of intricate, minute clockwork detail that in the final render looks amazing. By the way, you might be wondering how to texture your complex models like this. And let me tell you, it is so simple. It's just image texture from textures.com. Put it through a color ramp into the color just to give it that orange steampunk look. And then I played around with the color ramp myself to add some roughness. But when you use something like this picture of an aircraft, it's got so much detail because it's a real picture. So for the third tip here, a variety of detail is so important. Well, what does that mean? So getting your small detail, like these aerials here, getting that medium detail, like these buildings, these panels, and then large details, like these giant buildings. So how do you create this variety of detail? Well, as you're creating your scene, try and find what's missing. And if you can see a lot of small detail, well then of course you need some large detail to complement that. So with this scene, I was struggling to see what it needed. And then I realized it was a small detail. So what I did is I added these floating sci-fi things. But the important thing is this aerial. This is just a cylinder with extrusions and stuff. And then with the same thing, I just duplicated it and rotated it. Another small detail that I used in this scene was the texturing for these sci-fi buildings. If you want to learn how I did that, check my video on how to use JS placement for sci-fi texturing. Trust me, you'll learn a lot. So my fourth and final tip is lighting. If you have some specific concentrated spotlights that have a small spot size that just focus the light on your subject, you don't have to worry about the quality of your details. Since there's not much light that's gonna reach your details, your texturing and modeling can be very basic. You're essentially just creating a silhouette. And when you're creating a silhouette, intricacy is very easy to create. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something and you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, and keep going with Blender. You got this.